the president called sorry tiny o'connell reading from pulling princes uh flirting with princes the uh, this is about saber if for all of you who uh, play saber you may want to write to me with all your criticisms but this is from the from uh, my son's uh advice the president called freddie's name first that's the prince and as I watched him lope down the piste to the on guard line in this really sexy way, I couldn't help but think how fit he'd become. Not just fit, actually, but so fit. He'd grown a lot last term and was now a good few inches taller than me. He was also much cooler looking. At this time, he wasn't sporting that gross pimple thing on his forehead. Even though I knew I was going to slaughter him on the piste, I started to feel a little bit nervous. I was even blushing because he was so, so utterly, well, there's no other word for it, fit. Thank God for the fencing mask covering my burning cheeks. To fence Sabre, you need a metallic uh, jacket worn over your plastic plastron to register hits and to avoid serious injury to vital organs. Sabre being the only cutting weapon used in fencing. Officially, you're not supposed to hurt your opponent too badly, but in practice, Sabre is a dirty weapon. Sabre is the most aggressive and impressive type of bout to watch. Most Sabres like to make the most of their weapon, and as a result, we were all pretty bruised and sore by the end of a few bouts. Certainly that was my experience with Saber um, in the few experiences I had at the hands of my son. Um, we did it as teenagers, but it was not nearly as aggressive as we did in the uh, Saal of our house in London. Oh, sorry, I lost my place. Most Sabreurs like to make the most of their weapon and as a result we were all usually pretty bruised and sore by the end of a few bouts. Like completely black and blue all over your torso and arms and anywhere else people can get, uh, your opponent can get a hit in. Our teammates had helped us hook up the backs of our jackets to the electrical apparatus that was linked to a box on the ceiling and registered our hits with coloured lights and a buzzer. Freddie and I saluted the president first and then one another cautious, casually lifting our blades to our lips and back down to the fencing position. Whenever I salute my opponent before I bow about, I think how strange it is there is so much etiquette involved before two people attempt to kill each other. But there we are, as Sister Regina would say, diddly dee. Then we put our masks on and wait, waited for play to be called. Brett Alaz. I advanced down the 14 metre piece, for figuring, unlike my son, I do not speak French, being a bit of a wimp, would either retire or parry, but instead he reposted, attacking into my offensive, which took me a bit by surprise. I made my attack swiftly, though, scoring a hit. The buzzer rang and the president called my hit. There's this thing called a captor inside the sabre guard, which allows hits to be recorded on the electrical apparatus, but only if the blade arrives in, on the lame by way of a cut or point. Any other hit is invalid in sabre. Sometimes with everything happening so fast, you don't really know if your hit's valid or not until the buzzer sounds and the president calls halt or stop, at which point the clock is stopped until play is called again. For those of you who play polo, it's a little like that. In the melee, when everything's all happening and you're thrusting and fainting all over the place, um, that's not swooning, but fainting as in fencing, it, you have no idea who's winning, who's losing. You're just in the moment. It's aggressive, it's exciting, and it's fast. Like polo, for polo girls. Freddie scored the next hit with an obvious attack, provoking me into a parry of Quint in the neck by threatening with a blade cut to the head and then disengaging the parry and rotating his blade to cut at my flank. Ooh. Fencing actually is very, very sexy. It's an old one, but a gold one, as Professor Sullivan likes to say, in French, of course, even though it doesn't rhyme. It does in English. 
Freddie's balance was excellent and his coordination reasonable, but he was no match for my compound attacks and disengagements, disengagements moves that require a skillful wrist action, which you'd think he'd be brilliant at being a boy. Whoops. Actually, Professor Sullivan, although that's something that the nuns would say. Actually, Professor Sullivan isn't wrong. Fencing's like chess but it is so fast that your brain must be completely focused. That can be very difficult when your opponent's a really fit member of the opposite sex. There was a moment when an image of me willfully committing a corb de corps, a totally illegal move, flashed through my mind and Freddie scored another hit off me. The rest of the hits were all mine. Although, to be fair, Freddie, Freddie was pretty cunning and his parries and riposts were totally respectable. But as Star always says, in Sabre you can parry and riposte all you like, but you're only putting off the ultimate moment of your slaughter. Fencing might be a chest of the body, but the sword is a weapon. And in Sabre, it is often a case of the most aggressive, fearless player winning, especially at our level. I was totally wired. Hit after hit went to me. Cheers, Fred said as we shook hands after the bout. He'd taken off his mask to reveal dazzlingly, dazzling cornflower blue eyes and ink black hair. I took off my own mask, revealing the fluffy bits. You can see them. The fluffy bits at the front of my hairline, which I didn't need a mirror to know, were sticking up like horns. Yeah, um, thanks. Well, pre well played, Freds. My name's Freds, by the way dialogue teenage dialogue it's not brilliant like I wouldn't have known that anyway he was the prince the heir to the throne on newspapers across the nation every day but there we are I don't know where he thinks I'm from I may be American but I'm not from the moon by the way I'm not American but Calypso mine's Calypso I stuttered Please don't mention my name, I thought. Please, God, don't let him mention my name. Why do I have to have such a stupid name? We grinned stupidly at each other as they detached us from the electrical recorder. God must have been listening because Fred's just said, You were terrifying out there. You really rinsed me. Gee, um, thanks. <laughs> Quite cutting, aren't you? He drawled. Was that a flirty look in his eyes, or was he just squinting? Thanks, I said stupidly. I didn't know you fenced Sabre. I've only taken it up recently, which probably explains why I'm such bollocks, right? Well, you were pretty fit, actually. I mean, um, competent, competent. Like, your flungers weren't horrendous or anything, and your renewal was sort of um, impressive. My father thinks when I'm in a hole, I like to keep digging. I was saved from further bad dialogue by Honey and Arabella and a few of the fencing girls who'd already fought their bouts and been seeded out of the pools, which meant more time to chat to boys, which for them was the whole purpose of doing fencing in the first place. Wow, Calypso, that was so amazing, darling. Well done, Arabella squealed as they all clustered around the prince like Ashams. Yeah, right. Like they were actually even watching me. Thank you, I muttered as I squeezed out of the circle. They were fluttering their eyelashes at the prince so hard I thought they were going to knock themselves out. I watched him closely as he chatted amicably in that charmingly deferential, Etonish way that I couldn't help but feel a tiny frisson of something, probably dehydration, I thought, deciding to leave the it girls to it and went over to the refreshment stand for a drink. Star was there getting into her plastron. Cool bout, Calypso. Fred's wasn't bad either. I mean, seriously, at the tournament last year, I thought he was totally tragic. I didn't even know he did Sabre. Yeah, it was okay. I thought he was pretty good, actually, I agreed. Even though you rinsed him right, she laughed. Listen, after we finished our bouts, do you want to come to the pet shed with me to check on Hilda? I'm really worried about her cold. Her eyes looked all sad and bleary this morning. Sure, I agreed, even though I would have preferred to chat a bit more with Fred's. When almost all the bouts were over and tea was served, Fred's came over and stood near me, only he was still in an enveloped in a bubble of Honey's friends, so I couldn't get to talk to him. 
We were on. We were watching Star trounce a member of his team. I thought for one second Fred's was looking at me, but then it turned out he had something in his eye. Honey helped him to get it out. Star dragged me away before I had. I even had a chance to say goodbye, which was completely irritating because when we got to get get got to the pet shed, Hilda was running around on a wretched rat wheel like there was no tomorrow. Still, we had to give her a little cuddle though. Um, I'll next read about the dorm parties at boarding school, but this is uh, Pulling Princes. It's on Amazon for 99 cents or P or something. Um, the E edition and the paperback, I think, is, I don't know, whatever the publishers are charging. But I really hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy my readings, and I know they're a bit blabbery, but I'll get better.